right, church. This is the day that the Lord has made. So let's rejoice and be glad in it. Let's worship together today. Let's just start with a prayer. Wherever you are right now, I just invite you to pause for a moment. And let's invite the, the presence of the Holy Spirit into our, our current situation. God, we just, we want to exalt you through this time of worship. We want to glorify you and magnify you during this time of worship, God. We ask you, Father, to just pour out your spirit upon our families as we are worshiping together, as we're reading the word together. I pray, Father, that your spirit would just fall among the households. May you bring peace and hope and joy to your people, God. We love you, Father, and we thank you for Jesus and the reason that we have hope. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship together.
sing it out. Praise the Father. Father. Lord, I pray right now that as, as we gather together in worship and we gather to hear the Word of God, Father, that your Spirit would fall upon each household. Father, that each and every person or family that is watching or following along this morning, Father, would sense your presence. Know your glory, Father. They would call you King of kings and Lord of lords, the great and mighty one. Father, because you are the God who answers prayer. Father, you're the God that meets us in the middle of our storms, that, that reaches out and places us in your hands in our moment of uncertainty. Father, and I sense this morning there are people, Lord, that, that need that, that sense of hope. Lord, they need to know this morning that they stand in the presence of God. 
Father, I pray for encouragement. I pray for healing. Father, I pray that this time of uncertainty would be removed. Father, we pray that you would do what only you can do because you are the great and mighty physician. Lord, you're the great and mighty scientist. There is nothing that is impossible without you, through you, Father. And this morning, Father, we call your glory down, Father, not just in our service, but throughout our land, throughout our world, Father, that the world would come to know you as the Lord and as the Savior. Father, we are just blessed to be in your presence. I lift up the needs of our church. I lift up the needs, Father, of the body of Christ. And we place each and every person in your hands and trust, Father, for your guidance and your, for direct, your direction. Those that need hope will find hope. Those that need peace will find peace. Father, those that need encouragement would find the encouragement that they need. Father, open up our hearts to hear your word this morning, to respond according to your will. Father, to you be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Blessings to wherever you may be on this day, the Lord's Day. If you're watching this, uh, uh, whether it's on YouTube or through Facebook, we welcome you to, uh, to what I guess church online. The word coronavirus. It's really interesting that this word is now across everyone's lips throughout this whole, get this, throughout this whole world. 7.8 billion people on this earth have heard, almost all have heard of this word, coronavirus. My five-year-old granddaughter, she knows this word coronavirus. Everyone knows this word, also called COVID-19. It has strangled our earth. It has sucked all the uh, wind out of our sails. It's taken our breath away. It's knocked us down. It's disrupted our world. It truly has changed, at least for a while, it's changed our life. Countless lives have been changed probably forever due to those who have lost lives. There's fear. What's the solution? What can we do? I think we're hoping that by isolating and quarantining people, that maybe by shutting down our country, that perhaps we can somehow eliminate this, this virus to spread, and we hope that this is helping. I know the scientists, they're frantically searching for a miracle drug that could possibly bring a powerful cure to this deadly force that's destroying many lives. So what really is the answer? We, we know that those are the hopes and those are the things that we are praying that will happen. What really is the true answer to all of this? Gary and I, uh, we sat around this last week and we were talking about what, what really is the answer? What's the solution? Almost every single day we come in and we, we listen, uh, have listened to the news and we're talking about what are some of the newest events, what are the things that are being said out of Washington, D.C., and what are the things that's bringing encouragement and what are the things that are not bringing comfort to us. And we're talking. And we're trying to prepare for this message and the messages to follow. We know that we are desperate. We are desperate for some answers. We're confused. There's a, a struggling, uh, overwhelming feeling of lostness right now that's taking place in this world. So what's the answer? What is the acronym of, of the word cor, uh, of coronavirus? What's the opposite of this word? I would say that, and all of us would probably agree, coronavirus is a very negative word. Let me tell you what I think it means it means sickness, death. It means pain, sorrow, destruction. But what would be the opposite of this word? The opposite word, I think, is the word that we would look for would be words like joy. We would hope resurrection and life and health and being back together again, the opposite of coronavirus. Really, is there, is there one word that would be able to stand up opposite of coronavirus that would really help us during this time. I believe, and Gary and I decided to make our messages over the next uh, few weeks just around this one single word. It's the word Jesus. I know you're probably thinking, okay, we got that. Uh, we understand that's kind of a trite word. That's what I expect from, from pastors. 
But, but I want you to hang with me because I want to explain why this word really has to be the key, the factor to, to what's going to get us through this difficult time. Now, the word again, coronavirus has some negative meanings. Coronavirus means darkness. Now get this. Jesus, on the other hand, means light. Coronavirus means death. Jesus means life. Coronavirus is a storm. Jesus is this. He's peace in the storm. Coronavirus is, a, is fear. Jesus, get this, he takes away fear. Coronavirus is isolation. And Jesus, he's unifying. He unifies us. There is no other word. There is no other name that could help us other than this powerful name, the name Jesus. What are some words that we really would like to hear? Well, I think there's some words that we love to hear, such as the word Cure, solution, vaccine, eradicate. Those are great solutions. We hope that that would happen. And while we wait on man's solutions to this highly contagious, disruptive virus, I think while we wait on the answer, we have to turn and have to have hope in something that's going to help us with our anxious, aching soul in the midst of of this war. And the one name, the one name, the one name that takes away the doubt and gives us comfort in our discomfort and gives us security when there is no security left in this world, that name has to be Jesus. It's the opposite. It's the, the name Jesus is opposite of the word coronavirus. Now, how do I know that? Because when we think of the enemy, when we think of the devil, we think of the opposite, which is Jesus. Now, let me explain this. John 10, 10 says, the thief. Who's the thief? The enemy, the devil. What does he do? He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Isn't that what the coronavirus is doing? It's come to steal and take away from us, steal our life. It's taken people's lives, destroying the way we live. But listen to the opposite of this. The opposite is Jesus. Jesus says, I've come that you may have this, life. Not just any kind of life, but an abundant, a full life. Now, I doubt, I doubt if anyone on this planet Earth right now could come up with a better name, a more powerful name that's opposite of coronavirus than Jesus. Because I believe that it is the strongest name on this earth. And it should be the strongest name in our English vernacular. Now, if you can come up with a better name, you can come up with a better word than Jesus to handle the crisis, then please share it with us. I'd like to know. Just send me an email, text it to me. If you can come up with a better name than Jesus, I'd like to know. Before this, uh, before this virus shut us down and it changed the way we live, we had a series that, we were, that was really the theme for the year. It was this, above all else, God is the center. And we got to the part where it says, God is the center of me. Now, we've kind of segue, but not far from, uh, not far from what we've been teaching. Instead, of talking about God as the center, we've included his son, Jesus Christ, our savior, as the key component in how we're gonna handle everything that we face. Before we even had this virus, before it even came around, we were talking about how God has to be the center of our life throughout all of the things in life. Why? Why do we need Jesus? Because I believe this passage more than anything in Philippians 4, 13, where it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens, who strengthens me. Jesus, Jesus. But he's more than a name. He's not just a name. He's more than a, a word study. He's not just a, a name that we find in the history book or books or the, or the name that we read about in the scriptures. He's not one of the many other gods. He is God. He is God Almighty. And God sent into this world. Now, you've got to understand, he sent his son, Jesus. And he sent his son, Jesus, 
for times such as now. Jesus came for moments, for moments that we're going through right now. Jesus came so that when we face darkness and when we go through the difficult times and we come against principalities, we have that one word, that one name that gets us through whatever we're going through. Listen to this. Psalms 44, 5 says, through you, through Jesus, we push back against our adversaries and it's through your name that we will trample down those who rise up against us. And Deuteronomy 3, 22 says, so do not be afraid of them. The Lord your God himself, he'll do this. He will fight for you. That's our God. That's our Savior, which is what the name Jesus means. So, so why is this name so important? Why do we need to call upon Jesus in this time when we're going through these man-made diseases and viruses that is, that's, uh, that's invaded our, our, our earth why? Because when the enemy comes, and along with man's carelessness that can cause a pandemic, and it takes, more, it takes more than just a vaccine just to cure our bodies, to put the world back together again. It's more than just simply organizing the world and with, uh, with anything that the Congress or the Senate's trying to do or trying to give a stimulus package to, to make it through this difficult. It's more than just any of these things. It's more than just about being bankrupt financially that's gonna, that, that we need help with. There's, it's more than this. It's more than just the isolation. It's more than the polarization that we have from being separated from one another. It's, it's more than all these things you see. It's what we know that's happened to us within. There's been a depletion of our inner strength. We're, we're kind of bankrupt within, at least for a while. And when we get to the other side, we're going to have to have some hope. We need hope now in the midst of the storm, but we're going to need hope when we come out of this storm. I, I believe this. I believe that there's no question, there's no doubt. I believe that soon we will recover. We'll be out of the storm. I also believe that after we recover, we get through this storm, I hope that when we find our way on the other side that we realize this, that Jesus Christ has been the most important person, <laughs> the authority in our life when we come out on the other end. Why? Because there's power. There's power in Jesus' name. Now listen to this. Philippians 2 verses 9 through 11 explains this power to us. God, it says, God has exalted Jesus to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth, and get this, and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In other words, what the scripture is telling us is this, that Jesus is the most powerful, powerful name on the face of this earth and under this earth. There's no other name. There's no other name in this universe. There's no other name that we can call on other than Jesus. We've lost hope. Some have lost hope because they're losing uh, financial gain. And I heard today that there's people that are taking their lives because of this uh, uh, shutdown of work. And I got that. I understand that. We all realize that. But we've put our hope in a lot of different things. We've put our hope some in, uh, in people and some have put their hope in ad addictions and hoping that that would get them through life and, and some have had greed. But we're learning something in this crisis that none of those things really matter. And when the crisis comes, what happens? Our values change. They change. And, and where we place our values, where they are at, we learn real quickly that things can disappear in a second. All of a sudden, where we thought we were a few weeks ago is not where we are now. There's no magical power in the name of Jesus. There's no, there's no magic in the, in the name of Jesus. 
but, but all the power of the omnipotence belongs to the one who bears it. King Solomon wrote in Proverbs 18.10, he says, The name, the Lord, is like a strong tower. The righteous person runs to it, and when they run to it, they are set safely on high. Let me give you three strong reasons why we need to run to that tower this day. Number one, we have healing. (laughs) We have healing in his name. Do you know the Bible and the four Gospels says that there, uh, there was 35, 35 miracles that Jesus performed? That's the ones that are listed, at least in the Scriptures. A large number of miracles are probably not even mentioned. Jesus had power. He had the power to heal. He had the power to touch lives. He had the power to bring the dead from the graves. The Scripture tells us that all power and authority has been given to us. Now get this. Jesus has vested into us that same power. Now think about it. Let me add this before I get into uh, more thoughts on that. Never have I been more thankful for our health workers and for our frontline people. For those that have been risking their lives for all, (laughs) all of us, for the health workers that may be hearing this this morning, please accept mine and probably millions others, our appreciation and our thanks for giving your all and risking your life for us. I want to say thank you to the doctors and the nurses and the chemists and the scientists and all who do research and they use their gifts to be earthly problem solvers on earth. I think that God give, has given them power to do the things that they're doing and they're gifted because God has given them the abilities. But I also know that even with their capabilities and their insights and their wisdom and the knowledge that they have, that they have yet to, at the moment, come up with an answer to this virus. And right now we are stalled. We're stalled in life. We're waiting for some answers. And I believe the answers will come. But let me add this, while we wait, while we wait through this, this is the reason this power, this power in Jesus is so important. Because this is what Jesus is capable of doing. This is the power that he's invested in us. The power is given to us to heal, to heal our hearts and to calm those in the middle of the trials. Jesus is the great healer. And God has given to us that same authority and that same power to bring encouragement and support and all kinds of other ways of kindness that we can offer to one another. That's power. When we're fearful, when we're going through things, we have that kind of ability to be the healer just as Jesus is. Jeremiah 37, 17 says, But I will restore you to health and heal your wounds, declares the Lord. We believe that eventually life in America will be restored and this virus will be conquered. But after it's all said and done, this is when I get concerned. Because like other tragedies or catastrophes or things that have come in the past, for a little while people turn to God and and they depend upon him. And then after a while when things get going good, they forget who he is. The side effects and the recovery time, it's taken its toll on us now. And then eventually we will move on. And there's been some great stories. There's been some kind, generous stories of what people have been doing. They've been played out. And we see that those are helping us to get through some of these difficult times. But, but I want you to understand this. When we come out on the other side, it should make you stronger. It should make you a different person. It should make you even a greater person in Jesus and a a person with greater faith for what he's doing. Let me add what it says in Psalm 147, 3. He heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. He heals us. He binds up our wounds. And we shouldn't forget that when we come through this difficult time. The second thing is this. We have this strong tower that we run to because we have authority in his name. What kind of authority do we have and what kind of authority do we need? 
I think there's a lot of things that we have in regards to needs. I think that we all like to physically be able to embrace one another again. I think that we are missing uh, the touch. We're missing the intimacy. We're missing being in church together. We want contact. We want to go back to out to eat. <laughs> Anywhere, publicly, where we can go and eat. We want, our, we want our normal life back. And I think when we come out on the other side, I believe they might find there might be some new huggers. I'm a hugger, and maybe some of you, when you come on the other side, you might become a, a hugger too. In fact, we want to be able to laugh again. We want to enjoy each other again. Isn't that the best part of living? We're missing all of that. You know, I even thought about this. It may not last long, but I don't even mind being around a little grumpy people for just a little while when we get through this. Just for a little while. I would enjoy just being around a few grumpy people because I haven't been around too many lately. Don't send me any notes. I don't need those. So we don't have the words. We don't have the answers. We don't have anything that we can offer you during this time. Hopefully this is temporary. But I know that we all agree, and hopefully you understand, that what fills that void is his presence. We're not allowed to be around each other, and there's a void that's there. And we're left now with this truth. We've been downtrodden. We've been beaten up. We're, we have kind of uh, had to make our own kind of joy at home. And hopefully you're doing that with your family and playing games and getting acquainted and even hopefully taking some, some restful time that maybe you've needed to take for quite some time. But listen, the psalmist was so right in Psalm 23, verse 4, when he says, even though when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will not fear. I will not allow the evil to get a hold of me. I will not allow it to strangle me. Instead, I know, I know, I know that your rod and your staff, it comforts me all the way through this. Folks, the Holy Spirit is right here with us to encourage us through this. We cannot, in fact, we must not forget that we don't have a Nancy, Pamsy, weak, hopeless, anemic Savior. We have a Savior who is a king. No, he's not just a king. He's the king of kings. He's not just a Lord. He is the Lord of lords. He's our intercessor and he's our advocate. We have more than just a name that we call upon. He's our guide, he's our comforter, and he's our voice of authority when we've lost our understanding and we don't have the words to even be able to explain what we're going through because he's our redeemer. He's that bright and morning star. He's much more, he's the captain. He's the captain of our soul. The third thing is this, this strong tower that we run to. We have victory in his name. Scientists are stepping it up. And science is trying to find a solution for this dead, deadly virus. And we're hearing some good reports. And hopefully they will find one really quickly. But also history has proven to us that while there may be a cure for this problem, there's always another problem that follows. We still haven't found the solution for the problems of aging. I know that as I get older, I got more wrinkles. And my body's not like it used to be. It is, uh, science hasn't found a solution for dying. We have some of, those, some of the most brilliant researchers around, but they haven't been able to discover any solution for aging and death. This is why we believe in the name of Jesus. No matter what we go through in life, no matter what we experience in life, no matter what we have in our frailties and the frustrations and the hardships and the downtrodden times that we go through life, this is the one thing that we have more than anything else that we hang our hats on. It's this fact that our victor has conquered death. Our Lord has given us a promise. Our Lord has given us eternity. This is the promise we have. No matter what comes, no matter what's destructive in this world, whether it's this virus or something else that destroys this world, what, even if this earth is, is burned up and destroyed, even in a nuclear war, and everything could end tomorrow, this we do know, that those who have called upon the name of Jesus and depend upon his presence, they have this promise that no matter what happens... We know the outcome. Those who believe in Jesus Christ know the, the future of eternity. Listen to 1 Peter verses 1 through 
3 through 7 in chapter 1 of 1 Peter. Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Get this, from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven, waiting on you, waiting for those who will leave this world, pass from this world while we're temporarily residing here and go into the next world and we will be in the presence of Jesus. Get this. The inheritance is kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's, there's that word, God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you have to suffer grief and all kinds of trials and all that we're going through with the virus and everything else. These have come so that the proven genuine genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold and money and every, everything else we have put our life and our, our stock into, greater than worth than gold, which perishes, and even though refined by far, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. See, while we are passing through this world, While we're temporarily making our home here, someday we will be with Jesus. Get this, Jesus, the greatest word that I can come up with, the greatest name on this earth, Jesus forever. Boy, that should steady us. That should help us in these difficult times. That's something that we know. That's a consolation. That's an encouragement we have. The day of miracles is not past because the God of miracles is still present with us. We have the future planned out for us, but right now, in the, knowing the future, we have the present, the power of God right now with us. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how big the problem is or how bad things are. And I know they're difficult now. now. But let me tell you, everything is under the feet of Jesus, the one who has authority over this earth. The name of Jesus stands out as the name above all names. You can literally take that name Jesus and add to the many more meanings of his name. And and today, I want you to listen to all the compound names, just a few of the name of Jesus. Listen to these names of Jesus. So as Pastor said last week, we sat down in the office and began to talk about and pray about the direction that our message, messages would go over the next few weeks. And, and as he said, we just focus on the name Jesus. I think it was Monday that I opened up Facebook and somebody in our church had just posted the name Jesus, just a picture of the name, and it just said Jesus. Well, as the week has gone on, that, net, that image has been spread over and over again. And in the comments underneath it again and again are people saying who their Jesus is and, and, and praising God because at the name of Jesus, we find hope and encouragement. So we took the alphabet and we took some of those names and we put together a list and listened to the names of Jesus that many of you even put online. Starting with the letter A, Jesus is anointing. He is amazing, apostle, author. He is Alpha. He is the beginning, beloved, the bread of life, the bright morning star. Jesus is the counselor, comforter, the cornerstone. He is Christ. He is deliverer, the door, the desire of all nations. Jesus is everlasting. He is Emmanuel. He is friend, faithful, the fountain of life. He is God. He is great. He is the gift of Our God, the glorious God, he is our helper, our hope, the horn of salvation, head of the church, high priest, the Holy One. Jesus is I am, immortal, immeasurable. He is joy. He is just. He is Jesus. He is king. He is king of kings, king of glory, king everlasting. Jesus is life, the light of the world, the lion and the lamb. The living stone, Jesus is love. He is messenger, Messiah, master, mighty, mercy. He is mine. 
He is omega, omnipresent, priest, provider, the prince of life, the prince of peace, the physician. He is righteous. He is rest, refuge, the rock of ages. He is shepherd, son of God, son of man, our shield and servant. Jesus is our savior. He is teacher. He is truth. He is the word, the way, and wonderful. Who is Jesus? He is Christ, Messiah, Prince of Peace, Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty One. He is Emmanuel. He is the way, the truth, and the light. He is the Good Shepherd. When we need Him, He is there. When we get knocked down, He picks us up. When we are lost, He goes after us. When we are afraid, He is our protector. He is the light of the world, the rock, the foundation, the cornerstone, the living stone. That is my Jesus. That is our Jesus. And we could go on for the next hour talking about our Jesus. But that in itself should, it should motivate you and get you excited about the fact that you are not alone. That he's right there beside you. He's with you every step of the way. And through the difficulties and the trials of what we are facing as a country, it's not just you doing and going through this by yourself. It's all of us. All of us are going through this together. Together we are struggling. But the unifier... The one who comes, the I, I am, the great and morning star, the one who is there as our advocate to our Father in heaven, the beginning, the end, the first to last, the Alpha, the Omega, the one that we are seeking is right there to get us through. Oh, we're struggling, but you're not alone. Oh, it's difficult, but he's right there beside you. I know, I know your heart's heavy. Of course, all of our hearts are. But he lifts up the heaviness. He's God Almighty. He's the author and the finisher of our faith. He's God holding us up in the testing of our faith. And the thing that he does when our bodies perhaps can suffer illnesses and lack of uh, cures for some, there's one thing that he does. Jesus protects our soul. Jesus comforts us in the times of unrest. Oh, you see, Jesus, Jesus, the most powerful name on this earth, and there's many more names I might add. But I leave you with this verse. The psalmist said in Psalm 135, Oh, I wait. I wait for the Lord and my soul waits. And we're doing a lot of waiting right now. But I wait. And in his word, the scripture says, in his word, I hope. Our hope is in the name, the name of Jesus. Jesus, 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 we seek you, we depend upon you, we're waiting on you, and we know that you get us through now carry us through life and you receive us throughout all eternity and so Jesus we say to you on this day we love you and we say thank you for being for being our savior in your name the name Jesus I pray amen oh Jesus Jesus darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus you silence fear oh Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus peace bring it all to peace
salvation that we have in Jesus Christ. There is no other way to the Father except through Jesus. And I thank you that you love us so much that you sent your son. God, I just want to pray right now for somebody that may be listening to this that does not know you. Jesus, I just, I just pray right now for the lost soul. The one who is hurting and fearful and lost. I just pray right now that they would turn to you. That they would know in their heart that you died for them. And that they would receive you and all that you have for them. Right now, Father, I pray right now, God, that, that your church would be mobilized to, to reach those people, God. 
that your mighty hand that is doing this work would bring people to you. We praise you, Jesus. We pray all of this in your powerful name. Amen.